type of content. You do know that it ain't it ain't street people that these this type of stuff is made for. It's the people outside of the culture that are enamored and, and attracted to that shit. Yeah, that's true. Right? Which is the which is the majority of society. The majority of fucking society is not in the street. Even the majority of the hood is not in the street. It's the same way like we all embrace Scarface. Right. That wasn't our culture. We wasn't uh, Cuban and all that other stuff. We didn't live in Miami. But I'm telling you, when that Scarface goddamn movie hit, everybody in the world wanted to be a drug dealer and sell motherfucking cocaine. You know, the thing is, uh, the thing is, um, when that movie came out, I took a, about half a dozen dudes from my block on the concourse to go see it on at the at the uh, Valentine. Oh, it's Spice. Uh, oh, the Valentine. Yeah, on on um, Fordham Road between Fordham Road and Valentine. Right, yeah. right, right, like a couple of blocks before Jerome. Yeah, with the right next to where the IM used to be. And so we went in there. It was and we went early. We've been waiting for this movie. Waiting for this movie. Waiting for this movie. Right. We went early, and so we come out of the movie theater. And my, you know, my 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 little homies from the neighborhood, whatever, they, they was like, oh, that shit was crazy. You know, like you used to do, come out to karate movies, everybody doing karate <laughs> and shit, right? And I come out that motherfucker, I'm already in the street. This is 83. I've been in the street three years already. So I'm I'm, I'm walking like, I'm in a daze, like, this shit got me so uneasy. I go home and I tell my mother, I said, Ma, Ma, they, 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 they showed everything. They, they know everything, man. They got, they had everything on the screen. And she said, motherfucker, I've been telling you since you was a kid that they know everything. That's why it's not, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. You think, you think that they know what's happening in Russia and they know, they know what's happening in China. They don't know what the fuck is happening here. Right. Of course they do. And that's shit like that is what kept me in place. Right. Shit like that. That's what kept me from no matter how much money I was making, keeping a relatively low profile. The people who were the people whom all these people are talking about now from back then, all those people knew me and all of them knew me to get money. And not all of them are dead. Not all of them are dead. Some of them are now home from prison. Some of them were, are, are still in prison. And some of, you know, some of them are, you know, are 20 years older than me. And they were people in the thing. So, they knew who was who in the thing. But if you weren't in the thing, there's a good chance you didn't know, really. You might, you might have been aware that I do something, right? but you had no idea the level on which I was doing it. No idea whatsoever, because I was taught by the real ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, rule one, this show, well, rule one is bear no witness. Uh, so hey, my, my, my thing has always two. been this. Rule three, too, bear no witness. But rule four, uh, this is your business, not show business, motherfucker. You want to be famous. My mother said, you want to be famous, write a book. Yeah, I like that saying. It's yeah. your business, not show business. My mother, told, she was telling me that in, in, in 75, 76. Right. When the majority of the people in my neighborhood in Harlem didn't know what drugs were. They knew people were selling drugs and buying drugs and using drugs, but they didn't know. They wouldn't know a drug from a bug. But they were in the hood, though. Like, they from around here. Right. That didn't mean shit. It didn't mean that you were a street person just because you from around here. Biggest fucking mistake ever made that right there. All right. those people who lost their lives and lost their freedom and lost their minds because they thought simply by being from around here, I must be a street nigga. I must be a street nigga. I'm from around this neighborhood. I must be a street nigga. Yo, give me some work. Yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a street nigga. Saints, man. Nobody, not me. That that street nigga shit is that that mentality had a lot of kids miss a lot of education. You know what I'm saying? The time yep. they wasted in the street, they could have they could have graduated college with a damn bachelor's, some a master's, some with even a doctorate. You get what I'm saying? So yep. it's crazy. But look, no, bro, I'm gonna let you go. Somebody asked Zeno's book. No, hasn't haven't started it. Uh, Teal Butterfly 
Haven't started it. He just hit me again about this. Like, uh, I guess he must be talking about it again because other people hit me about it. And then he hit me the other day about it. He hit me. He's like, yo, I, I, I want to do this shit. So, you know, he I said he wants to have a good book. Like, he's like. I, if he, he wants, if he wants to tell the whole truth, I won't do it if you don't want to tell the whole truth, bro. And and it ain't it ain't pretty. Like when I did Raised by Wolves, Raised by Wolves, I don't I don't look great on every page. I, right. I just told the truth because I knew that the truth was the only thing that was going to be of service to anybody. Right. If I didn't tell people the truth, what would they gain? Right. Another story about a nigga. I had this and I did that and I had that and I did this. What the fuck is the value of that? I told the truth, the harsh reality. This psychological and emotional and physical harsh reality. My family is three generations steeped in that motherfucking game. My family was in the dope game in the fucking 50s. I was born into that in my house, not my neighborhood, not my building, not my block, not some guy around the neighborhood. My family, my mother, my father, class one narcotic offenders, stone cold fucking killers. Shit that y'all only know from movies. Who's your mother and father? Who raised you? And how did you suddenly become a street person? Motherfuckers can say what they want to say. Most of y'all don't have the wherewithal to fucking tie your sneakers without falling on your face. And that's a fucking fact. I'm old enough to be the father for the majority of you motherfuckers. <laughs> That's a fact. Ain't enough to be my father, nigga. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you were yeah, still in Pampas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, well, no. I'm, I'm four. I'm five years older than you, but you know, uh, I, I, I have, I have seen so many lifetimes, bro. Right. So many lifetimes. Right. There are but so many dynamics to the human experience, bro. By the time you're 11, 12 years old. If you've had any degree of exposure, you've not been one of those kids who was kept in the house and made to go inside when the street lights came on, whatever. By the time you're 12, 13 years old, you have pretty much seen all that there is to see in or experienced in this life. As you get older. I ain't lying, nigga. I done seen the murder. I seen the jail cell. I seen I was in cuffs at 13. I experienced I was on probation all at about 13. So right. I understand what you're saying. Right. And, and those are just small, minute things like even within each one of those experiences you just mentioned within those experiences are an expansive experiences. So if you if you pulled the getting the seeing the murder, you took that, you said, all right, you push the button, seeing the murder, the experience of seeing the murder, the impact of the experience of seeing the murder. When you hit that like a tab, that should infinite drop list of all the other experiences a psychological and emotional experiences that go along with that right there are but so many things you experience in this lifetime and after you've experienced them it's just varying degrees of the same shit when you get 10 it's more of this and less of that when you were six but when you get 16 it's more of this and less of that when from when you were 10 it's this it, it all of it is happening all the time but it's Based upon where you are in your life at that point and what's important to you at that point, right. you're going to be focused on this aspect of reality. But the moment that your, your priorities shift, just like this, all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, where this come from? It's been there. It's fucking been there. It yeah. just wasn't a priority to you, but it's been there. It's not new. It did just coming to magically come into existence has been there. And if you were paying attention to it, you would have realized that whatever it is you're seeing, you've been seeing, it just wasn't a priority for you to, to, to make it a conscious awareness. But if you've seen it already, you've experienced it already, now you're just focused on that experience. So now it seems like a new experience. This is a new conscious experience. But subconsciously, you've seen it all. You've heard it all, you've, all of it. Yeah, depending on where you, 